When you lose weight, your metabolism slows down, and it's not just because you're smaller. No one really seems to know the real reason that our metabolism slows down, but it seems like every weight loss guru has their own personal pet theory for why. But there is actually science out there that has identified a major cause of metabolic slowdown from weight loss, and also why some people might have slower metabolisms even without weight loss, but no one is talking about it, probably because it's out there kind of buried in the scientific literature. But today I have found some studies that I'm gonna be sharing with you to tell you about this, and I pretty much guarantee you've never heard of it. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I run experiments of my own and publish scientific studies, and by night I share the results of other people's scientific studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, nutrition, and health goals. And as you probably know, pretty much all of my videos here go over science that has pretty surprising results, but this result I'm about to tell you about has got to be in like the top five crazy discoveries I've made while researching for this channel. So I'm pretty excited and a little horrified, and you'll understand why in a little bit, about this one, but I'm definitely excited to share it with you. So I'm going to walk through these studies as kind of a scientific mystery. So when people lose weight, they lose fat mass and they lose fat-free mass. So fat mass is your body fat, fat-free mass is your muscle mass, and those are the main two things that your body is shedding as you lose weight. And the amount of calories we burn are a function of basic processes we need to function, like powering our brain and things that don't depend on our weight, and also processes that do depend on our weight, like our ability to walk around and hold ourselves up and how much our muscles need to work to keep us standing and breathing and everything because the amount of fat and fat-free mass we have is gonna make these tasks easier or harder. So when we weigh more, we actually burn more calories at rest and while doing things. But the weird thing is when we lose weight, our metabolism actually slows down more than what can be explained by the amount of body mass we lost. So even when you account for all the fat you lose and all the muscle you lose, you still have this weird slowdown of metabolism that is not just caused by being smaller. So scientists have tried for a long time to figure out what is causing this discrepancy. Why are people's metabolisms slowing down more than just what can be explained by the amount of weight they lost? And one of the things that has been identified as changing a lot when we lose weight is our thyroid hormone, T3. So we tend to have lower thyroid hormone when we lose weight. So it kind of mimics a very mild version of hypothyroidism. And as you may know, if you have any knowledge of hypothyroidism, when our thyroid hormone is lower, our metabolic rate tends to go down and it becomes a lot easier to gain weight. So it seems like lower thyroid hormone could be a potential cause of slowed metabolism beyond just what could be explained by the loss of mass. But what causes that reduction in thyroid hormone? That cause is what the bulk of this video is going to be about. But first, for some background so you can understand what's going on once I actually tell you the cause, there are compounds both in our environment and in what we eat that are lipophilic, which means that they bind to fat. And sometimes these compounds are nice things like vitamins, like fat-soluble vitamins you may have heard of, like vitamin D. And other times those compounds are not so nice. And when we lose weight and we burn the fat in our bodies, we actually dump all those compounds into our bloodstream. So everything that was all trapped in our fat just gets released and the floodgates open and our blood just gets full of everything that was being stored in our fat for years and years. Sometimes we can clear out these compounds pretty easily by pretty much just peeing them out, but other times they are very difficult to get rid of. And one of the compounds that is extremely hard to get rid of and causes a ton of problems in our bodies is organochlorines, AKA pesticides. Before I get to the truly dramatic part of this video, I'm going to give a little background finding. And that is the fact that weight loss has been found to increase pesticide levels in your blood by as much as 400%. And that amount is higher if you lose more weight. So it scales with weight loss. And to get back to our mysterious cause of decreased thyroid hormone from weight loss, one study found that the decrease in thyroid hormones was predicted very strongly by the increase in pesticide levels from weight loss. So the people who had higher pesticides in their blood after weight loss ended up having way lower thyroid hormone. So the people who were having this massive dump of pesticides out into their bloodstream were having lowered metabolism from thyroid hormone being lower. And explaining this result is not difficult or surprising because it's known that pesticides disrupt our thyroid function 
and they pretty much disrupt everything else in our body so much that I should probably devote an entire video just to that. And now separately from thyroid hormone, just looking directly at the relationship between pesticides and metabolism slowdown, one study found that the rise in pesticides from weight loss explained half of the metabolism slowdown from weight loss. That is absolutely massive for an effect like this. Like I, I was texting a lot of my scientist friends because we were all just like, what the hell? <laughs> like that's wild. There are a few different components that could be affected by pesticides. And I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but one component is how much you actually burn at rest while doing nothing in a totally neutral environment. So like sleeping. And another component is how much you fidget and essentially wiggle around out of your control, which is called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And the study found that it was actually how many calories you burn at rest that's affected. So it's not your NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis, but it's actually your basal metabolic rate and specifically your sleeping metabolic rate that they looked at in the study that is really negatively impacted by pesticides. So you actually burn less calories in your sleep when you have higher levels of pesticides in your blood. So to sum up all these findings in a more easily digestible story, what's happening here is that you go through your life accumulating pesticides, mostly through your diet. They get stored in your fat. And then when you lose that fat or burn that fat, a lot of those pesticides get released into your blood where they run around your body completely wreaking havoc. And one of the ways in which they wreak havoc is they mess with your thyroid and reduce your thyroid hormone. And they're almost certainly messing with other metabolic processes too. And then this causes metabolic slowdown which then makes it much easier to regain weight. So this pesticide effect could be part of the reason why it is so much easier to regain weight after losing it. And this could also explain why so many people feel really crappy after they lose weight and they break out and they just have a poor mood and they just generally feel sick. Could be because your blood is literally coursing with pesticides, which mess with everything. Please excuse the change in lighting. I realized after editing that I really wanted to add this information. I know this video has been really focused on metabolic slowdown from weight loss so far, but that's mostly because the strongest studies come from people who have lost weight because they tend to have way higher pesticide levels than pretty much anyone else. But these effects still do happen on a general level, even if you haven't lost weight. So this could actually be one explanation for why some people feel like they have slower metabolisms. It could be that you actually have a slower metabolism thanks to having high levels of pesticides in your blood. And there are several studies on this. They're a little less strong than the weight loss literature, but there's still a lot out there and a lot more coming out to the point where a lot of researchers actually think that the obesity epidemic is in part caused by the massive increase in the use of pesticides. So it could be that everyone has higher levels of pesticides in their blood now. And that is why pretty much everyone is gaining weight because slower metabolisms. So unfortunately, none of us is safe from having pesticides unless you've been like living in a biosphere all your life where you have magically filtered air and water and grow all your own food and everything. So sadly, you almost certainly have quite a few pesticides coursing through your blood and that could be slowing down your metabolism if you have a more pesticide laden diet than most people. And with some of these pesticides, you can gradually clear them out over time. But with others like DDT, they actually persist in your body for decades which is pretty terrifying if you ask me. And now what to do about it? Honestly, the whole situation is pretty grim because there's so many pesticides everywhere, but I am digging and digging and digging like the research gopher I am <laughs> to find studies on things you can do to have less pesticides in your blood now. And more importantly, because there are way more things you can do to prevent getting more pesticides in your blood moving forward. And it's not just as simple as eating organic. Of course, that is a major step that you should do immediately if you really want to lower your pesticides. And you may be thinking, well, does this mean I shouldn't be losing weight? Like, it seems pretty dangerous to fill your blood with pesticides and it seems like it'll not even work or stay off anyway. Well, no, the general consensus is that being overweight is more dangerous than having all these pesticides in your blood. So this does not mean you should give up on weight loss. It just means you should approach it in a more strategic way to avoid these problems. And so that will be what part two is about in this video series. And I have already found a few studies, but I am going to keep looking for more over the course of the next week. And I will post part two next week with ways that you can reduce your pesticide levels in your blood and therefore counter this metabolic slowdown. So if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to make sure that you 
don't just leave my channel here on a very sad doom and gloom note, but instead can actually hear some solutions to deal with this crazy issue. And if you want to help me turn these episodes into podcasts too, so you can listen on the go, please head to my GoFundMe to help me get audio equipment because I do not make money off this channel. <laughs> so any help is very much appreciated. And if you liked this video, please, please share so people can learn about this. Like that's why I do this channel. That's why I talk about these studies is because no one is talking about them because no one seems to know they exist. Because again, finding these studies is like a skill that I trained for five years in getting my PhD and it is very difficult. So that's why I call myself a research gopher or terrier or mole. I need to find the ideal name here, but I dig and I dig and I dig through the research until I finally get a big pile of dirt to share with you, which I guess dirt doesn't sound very good unless you're a fellow gardener in which case dirt is ridiculously overpriced and also precious. Anyways, <laughs> if you like this video, please share it. If you share it on Instagram and tag me, I will reshare it in my stories and also be very grateful and also be very excited. And please also give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you back here next week for part two.